Understanding the basic refrigeration cycle is extremely important when you're doing troubleshooting in the field on the refrigeration side. Also, if you plan on taking a NAIT certification test or the EPA test, you will find many questions regarding the state of refrigerant throughout the refrigeration cycle. So it's very important to understand this cycle. We begin our journey through the basic refrigeration cycle in the compressor. The refrigerant begins its journey through the compressor as a cool, low pressure vapor, which serves the purpose to cool the compressor motor as it flows over the windings. As it flows over the windings on its way to the top of the compressor, it then enters the compression part of the compressor. As the vapor is compressed, heat is added to the vapor. When this vapor leaves the compressor, it is a high pressure, high temperature vapor. The high pressure, high temperature vapor from our compressor enters the condenser coil. In the condenser, our refrigerant rejects its heat content to the air circulating around the coil fins. As it condenses, it changes state and becomes a high pressure, warm liquid. By the time the refrigerant reaches the end of the condenser, it is a solid column of liquid. To ensure that we will have a solid column of liquid at the inlet of the metering device, we extract more heat from the refrigerant to ensure pure liquid. This is our subcooling. In some systems, a liquid receiver is added to make sure we have a solid column of liquid being fed to the metering device. The high pressure warm liquid leaves the condenser and makes its way through the liquid line on its way to the metering device. The liquid line must be a solid column of liquid entering the metering device for the device to operate correctly. The metering device is the dividing line between high and low pressure. As the high pressure warm liquid enters the metering device, it moves through a small orifice which immediately drops the pressure which causes the liquid to become a cool liquid. The refrigerant exits the metering device as a cool, low pressure liquid. The cool, low pressure liquid enters the evaporator and it begins to absorb the heat content of the air circulating over the fins of the coil. As the liquid moves through the evaporator absorbing heat content, it evaporates and changes state to a vapor. By the time the refrigerant reaches the end of the evaporator coil, it has all become a vapor heading to the compressor. In the last few passes of the evaporator coil, we add more heat to the refrigerant to assure there is no liquid present. This is our superheat. This superheated vapor enters the suction line accumulator, which is a compressor protection device designed to prevent any liquid still present to boil off before traveling down the suction line and entering the compressor. So let's briefly review our refrigeration cycle. We begin at the compressor as a high temperature, high pressure vapor. As it goes through the condenser coil, the refrigerant condenses to a liquid and exits the condenser as a warm temperature, high pressure liquid. At the metering device, we have the high pressure being reduced to low pressure, and it comes out and enters the evaporator as cool temperature, low pressure liquid. Exiting the evaporator, we have a cool temperature, low pressure vapor that is then returned back to the compressor to begin the cycle all over again. Go to arefco.com for more videos, like, subscribe, and check back every week for new videos.